Hey everyone, I'm Jan Ozer. Thank you for coming. Uh, today's webinar is on configuring your streaming video. And uh, I'd like to welcome you all here. Just to let you know, I am producing this with a new tech TriCaster TC40. Um, it is the first time that I've actually tried to do uh, all aspects of the production myself. So if there's a glitch or two, uh, hopefully you'll understand. Okay, let's cut into the presentation that we'll be working through today. And the topic of the conversation is going to be configuring your streaming video. And these, the first webinar, if you attended, was probably about 45 minutes long. Um, let me turn down the sound on this. It's a touch distracting. And I think this webinar is going to be more in the nature of 15 to 25 minutes long, and that should leave us time for questions. So I'm not going to take questions during the presentation um, for obvious reasons, but I, I will thereafter just leave them as comments on the live stream system. So 30-minute target Q&A for up to 15 minutes. And here's the agenda. Um, a lot of these concepts most of you are going to be familiar with, and some of, some of them you probably won't be. So data rate, resolution, frame rate you've probably heard of. Um, spend a little bit of time on that. Spend the bulk of our time on bits per pixel, which from my perspective is the one thing you need to know about every video file that you're streaming, whether it's live or video on demand. Got to know the bits per pixel because that tells you whether the quality is too low or, uh, or whether the data rate is too high and you're wasting bandwidth and, and potentially not reaching people who can't retrieve the file in real time because the, the data rate is too high. And then we'll finish up with a look at encoding for re-encoding. Okay, so what is the data rate? Again, this is a concept I'm sure you're familiar with. It's the amount of data per second of audio and video. In most encoding tools, you set them separately. This is the available bit rate for, or I'm sorry, the average bit rate is shown in Telestream Episode Pro. And it's a fundamental encoding parameter. Every time you encode a file, whether it's live or on demand, you're going to enter the, uh, the data rate of that file. And again, that's the data rate is the amount of data per second of audio and video. So why is data rate important? Number one, um, if you're a high volume producer, say a CNN or an ESPN, data rate controls your bandwidth costs, right? The more data you send with each file, the more you pay in bandwidth costs every month. Um, for most producers who aren't, you know, who bandwidth is perhaps an incidental expenditure, um, data rate is important because it largely controls quality. So you probably heard the term lossy, Basically, all video compression is lossy, which means the more you compress, the more you lose. At a fixed resolution, if you increase the data rate, um, you're going to get better quality. And if you decrease the data rate, you're going to get worse quality. So data rate is the single most important factor in overall streaming video quality. So what is resolution? Resolution is the width and height of the encoded video file in pixels. And this is Sorensen Squeeze. You see the width and the height. This is a 640 by 360. Uh, where this will produce a 640 by 360 file, which is the most widely used resolution on the internet today. And again, resolution like data rate, it, it's something that you set every time you encode a file. Um, now, you know, we shoot in HD. Most producers at this point are probably shooting in either 720p or in 1080p. And then we distribute at much lower resolution. So you see the little video in the frame window on the bottom right. That's a 640 by 360 window. And we shoot at that resolution because we like capturing the quality. Maybe we're going to use it for DVD or internal distribution. But we stream at the lower resolution. Now, why is that? And why is resolution important? So if you shoot at 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 um, per frame, that's 2,073,000 pixels per frame. It's a lot of data. Um, if you sample that down to 640 by 360, it's 230,400 pixels per frame. Now, most producers are going to encode at a target data rate. So I'll keep throwing around 1.2 megabits per second. That's the data rate that CNN uses for their 640 by 360 file. And resolution is important because if, if CNN compressed their 1080p input down to 1.2 megabits per second, they'd have to compress the video 10 times more than if they subsampled that down to 640 by 360 and then encoded the video. So why do we sample the HD video down to SD? Because it makes it easier to compress. Um, 
you know, one, one question you hear a lot, what comes first, the data rate or the re resolution? And that can, you know, that can happen either way. Sometimes, sometimes the web person will say, hey, we've got a 640 by 360 window. What data rate do we need to make the video look good? Um, sometimes you hear, you know, we can afford 1.2 megabits per second per stream. What resolution, what resolution will look good at that, at that data rate? And the key point is you always have to consider them together. So you can't really talk about data rate without knowing the resolution because 1.2 megabits per second is going to look great for 640 by 360. It's going to look awful for 1080p at 1920 by 1080. So never talk about those two things separately. Now what about frame rate? Um, back in the early days of streaming, maybe in the late 90s and the early aughts, a lot of producers reset the frame rate to 15 frames per second to improve quality. And you still see that technique used in very low bitrate files. You'll see some examples of that in a moment. Um, you see it used a lot for people targeting mobile, especially if they're producing a group of, uh, of adaptive files. Maybe they've got a mobile stream at 10 or 15 frames per second. But it's hardly ever used for the sweet spot, you know, the 640 by 360 at 1.2 megabits per second. The broadcast companies are never going to drop the frame rate um, to get good quality for those particular targeted streams. So I'm going to ignore the low, you know, I'm basically going to say, look, if you're you know, in the mid-range of the adaptive group or in the file you're producing for computer OTT playback, always produce at full frame rate. And you're going to see a lot of examples of that in both broadcast and in corporate coming up in a moment. Okay, so we talked about, you know, we talked about resolution, we talked about frame rate, we talked about um, data rate. So what pulls this number or pull these numbers all together for me is, is the concept of bits per pixel. So we're going to look at, you know, what it is and then how to apply it. So again, you know, the key question is, okay, Jan, you've talked about resolution, you've talked about data rate, you've talked about frame rate. What combination of resolution and data rate produces the optimal quality file? And, and this is where bits per pixel is relevant. So we've got two video files here from two different accounting firms. One is from Deloitte, that's on the right, and one is from, I think, Accenture on the left. Now, which of these firms would you take compression-related advice from? And just looking at these images, it's a bit tough to compare, right? I mean, the, the, uh, the video files, you know, they both look reasonably similar quality. Now, suppose I told you that the Accenture video was 320 by 180, so it's definitely a smaller video, and it was encoded at a data rate of 1.5 megabits per second. So you'd say, well, you know, that seems pretty high. It's a small video, but, you know, it, it's really hard to understand how that compares to the Deloitte video, which is much larger resolution and has even a lower data rate. So, you know, how do these two files compare? And here's where the concept of bits per pixel really becomes valuable, because when we include that, in the information, we see that Accenture is encoding their video on a bits per bit pixel basis almost seven times higher than what Deloitte is doing. Okay, so you're, you're automatically seeing, oh my goodness, comparing those two streams on a bits per, per pixel basis, Accenture is about seven times higher than Deloitte. Do they need all that data? Well, not if the Deloitte video looks good. So let's look at how to calculate this, and then we'll come back and look, look at some examples of bits per pixel. So the formula for bits per pixel, and I've got tons of spreadsheets to calculate this automatically, is your per second data rate divided by the number of pixels in the individual, you know, per second of video. And that is your frames per second times the width times the height. Or you can just get a program called Media Info, um, which is a free program available on the Mac, available on Windows, available on Unix even, that will give you the bits per pixel of every encoded file. So you've got the link there, download the file. You know, it's easy enough to calculate, but it's always nice to have, you know, a tool that does it for you in Media Info. Not only does it tell you bits per pixel, it tells you a lot of information about the file um, that's going to be relevant for other reasons. So, so what's the general rule for bits per pixel? Well, at 640 by 360, and you'll see in a moment why resolution is important for this, values above 0.2 are almost clearly a waste. So CNN is at 0.121, and that's for low motion video. And ESPN, obviously doing a lot of sports videos, maxes out at about 0.201, but that's for sports. And then as you'll see, the values drops as the videos get larger because codecs work more efficiently at higher resolutions. So what's the magic number? So here we see... You know, we see a table of, um, 
we see a table of media produced by different media companies. And it, this is not real easy to see, but this is segregated by groups. So the top group is total pixels. You know, basically it's anything smaller than 640 by 360 resolution. The middle group, or the top middle group, or the second group, um, is 640 by 360 resolution. And as I said, most, you know, that's the most commonly used resolution um, in broadcast today. Below that is slightly higher, that's 768 by 432. And then above that is the 720p group, 1280 by 712, 1280 by 720. And if you look all the way to the right, you see that the bits per pixel is 0.133 for the very, very small files, it, it goes up a little bit to 0.159 for slightly larger files, and then it starts to drop. For the 768 by 432, it's 0.134, and the 720p files are all, you know, they're at 0 0.056, very, very low. So again, this is compression getting more efficient at higher resolutions. Now while we're here, let's take a look at the frame rate. So that's the FPS column over here on the right. And what I said before, you know, none of the media companies are dropping the frame rate. They're all producing at the native frame rate. Obviously, 24 frames per second means they shot at 24, and then 29, 9, 7, 30 for all the rest. So most media companies, if not all media companies that I've seen, are producing at the native frame rate. They're adjusting resolution and data rate to get the quality uh, that they want in the video. So this is this is a highly technical file. Um, ben Wagner is a is a very, very well known, very, very good compressionist, worked for Microsoft for a long, long time. Now he works for Amazon. And he, I don't know if he made it up or if he's just, you know, found it, but uh, he calls it the power of 0.75 rule. And basically, it's a mathematical formula that shows you that your data rate needs on a per pixel basis go down as your resolutions go up. And in English, you know, what I told you before, codecs get more efficient in higher resolutions, so you don't need the same bits per pixel value at higher resolutions to preserve quality. And we're going to look at some examples and recommendations of how this works in, in, in a moment. OK, so what's the magic number again? And I just brought this, wanted to bring this chart up so you could see. Again, bits per pixel starts at 0.133 on the right for the very, very small files. I think it's an anomaly that it goes up to 0.159, and then you start to see it go down to 0.134 and to 0.056. So let's look at some corporate examples. That's the media. Now we're going to see four tables and then I'm going to summarize those tables in one table. So this is the very, very low resolution producers. Now a couple things about this table. These people are still producing in VP6. I think if you go back to, if you go back to the media companies, you see very, very few companies using VP6, none using H.263. So I think if you haven't moved to H.264, it's well past the time to be doing that. Um, but here in this group, you see one company at H.263, and you see 50% at VP6. Clearly not representative, clearly not bleeding edge compression types. No insult meant, um, you know, but that's kind of the way it is. And you're seeing, again, the bits per pixel values over here at 0.1356 are exceedingly high, much higher than you see for any broadcast company, and, and unnecessarily high, even with the VP6 codec. And you're also seeing, if you look at the frame rate, you're seeing 24, 15, 18, and 15. So you're seeing some companies dropping the frame rate in these lower video compressed uh, configurations. Okay, so this is all the video files that I found that were under full SD. So these are lower than 640 by 360 or 640 by 480. Um, what do we see here? You know, we see the bits per pixel value get to a pretty normal level. It's very close to what we saw for broadcast. It's 0.133. Again, we start to see some companies subsample their videos from 29.97 down to 15 frames per second. So maybe four or five companies out of these, you know, 12 or 15 are using 15 as opposed to the 30 frames per second. Um, and again, much higher representation of, of H.264 as compared to VP6 and no um, H.263. So here we go to companies who are who are using 640 by 360 or very close to 640 by 360. And what we see is, you know, these are some pretty tony companies. You've got Cisco, you've got General Motors, you've got Jeep, Kro Kroger, Porsche, Apple, Dell. And what we're seeing is, you know, I guess H.263 is still there. 
Um, don't know what to say about BMW on that score. But you're seeing no companies encoding at lower than the nominal frame rates. So everybody's at either 24 or 29 or 25. And you're seeing the bits per pixel averaging at 0 0.140. So again, much lower than what we saw for the, the extremely low files and, and kind of right online with what you're seeing with CNN. And then in the you know, larger than 640 by 360, again, we're seeing, I guess, a surprising representation of codecs. We're seeing nobody subsampling down to lower frame rates. Everybody's at either 24, 25, or 30, or around those numbers. And we're seeing bits per pixel values averaging at 0.117, which is, you know, at, at these resolutions, pretty close to, to where they should be. If you look at on the bottom, you see the, the 720p's, the last three. You see interactive intelligence at 0 0.06. You see HP, who does a lot of nice working, nice looking video at 0 0.076. You see Kurt Somm and a, a big consulting firm in Atlanta at 0 0.088. So again, we're seeing that drop in bits per pixel value that the, uh, the rule of 75 that Ben Wagner talked about kind of predicts. And here's the corporate summary. You know, the 0.589 in the, in the very tiny category, that's way too high. Um, but then we see at 0.133, it goes up for the full SD. I think that's an anomaly. And then it goes down um, for the greater than SD. So this is a table. It's, uh, it's one of the tables in producing streaming video for multiple screen delivery, my book. Um, and what do you see here? You see tables. You see different bits per pixel values on the right, starting at 0.08 to 0.1, 0 0.125, 0 0.15, and then 0.175. And what I'm trying to do with these red circles is, if I'm producing 1080p video, I'm going to encode at around 5 megabits per second and target 0 0.08 as my bits per pixel. As I go up to 720p, I'll encode at 2.7 megabits per second and target 0.1 as my bits per pixel. So if I'm you, I print this chart, and then next time I encode a video file, I look at the resolution, look at the data rate, and then try that. And let me just go ahead and do the next slide. You know, so, so you should know the bits per pixels for all videos. If it's too low, the quality is going to suffer. I mean, it, for a while, I got a bunch of, uh, bunch of consulting customers basically saying, look, Jan, the quality of my video is not good enough. What am I doing wrong? And it really came down to the fact that their bits per pixel value was just too low. If it's under 0.10 and your video looks bad, raise the data rate of your video or reduce the resolution. You know, there's no magic pill to make things better. Um, you know, there's no compression technology that's much better than anything else. If it's under 0.1, it doesn't look good. Now you know why. And if, you're, you know, if your data rate is too high, there's a cost for that as well. Not only if you're paying for bandwidth, does that increase your bandwidth cost. If your stream's too fat, it means that some people on slower connections may not be able to view the stream. So again, go back, test your video, calculate it, get media info. And if your bits per pixel value is over 0.2, um, Re-encode at a lower data rate to see if the quality will suffer. Try it at 0.15, try it at 0.175, and see if the quality is just as good at the lower data rate. Again, saving bandwidth cost and um, increasing the number of people who can actually access the video file online. Okay, so that's bits per pixel. And, you know, let's bridge over to encoding for upload to UGC and OVP. UGC is user-generated user content. OVP is um, online video platform. UGC sites, I guess YouTube is obviously the most famous one. Vimeo is up there as well, Media Cafe. Online video platforms, kind of the poster child is Brightcove. Uyala is another company, as is Kaltura. Um, what kind of brings them, these companies together into a class is that both classes re-encode your file for delivery, right? So when you're producing for delivery from your own website, things like bits per pixel really matter because you're, you're trying to reach the optimal blend of quality and affordability or quality and streamability. But when you're encoding for upload, your goal is to supply the highest quality master file to these companies because they're going to re-encode it. So the rules are changed. You don't worry about bits per pixel. You worry about you know, how do I get the highest possible quality file up there? And if you go to the YouTube's, you know, so I'm basically using YouTube's recommendations as kind of a general purpose recommendation for both um, UGC and OVP because obviously YouTube encodes more videos than anybody and what's good for them is going to be 
good for uh, online video platforms and other UGC sites. And if you look at the reference on the bottom of the page, you'll see that YouTube has two recommendations. One is standard quality and one is high quality uploads for creators with enterprise quality internet connections. And you know, everything's a trade-off with video compression. If you encoded a file at 8 megabits per second and a file and uploaded that to YouTube, and if you encoded a file at 50 megabits per second and uploaded that to YouTube, you would notice a small difference in the quality between the files that YouTube produced. It's not gross, it's not even obvious, but if you compare them side by side, you would see that the 50 megabit per second file produces a higher quality result. I know because I've done, I've done the tests. So, you know, basically it comes down to how many files are you producing, how fast is your internet connection. So I have a, you know, I produce maybe one YouTube file. You know, I, I upload to Brightcove for Streaming Media Magazine maybe once or twice a month. I encode everything at you know, 720p at 30, megabit, at 30 megabits per second because I'm not limited by my upload speed. You know, two files a month I can handle at 30 megabits per second. If I have, you know, if I was encoding 30 files a day and uploading those to Brightcope, it would be a different story. And basically the, the high level message is encode at the highest possible data rate that you can and still get all the files that you need uploaded done. It will make a difference. Um, not only now, but in the future, because YouTube will keep those files that you send them and use those again and again and again as they change compression for new technologies. So how do you do this? You know, if you're, if you're not familiar with encoding, if you're not that familiar with, with encoding tools like, um, you know, if you're not comfortable setting your own parameters, I guess is what I'm trying to say, most encoding tools will have YouTube templates. And what I, so what you see on the right here is you see compressor, you know, Apple compressor is on the top right, Adobe Media Encoder is on the bottom right. So find a template that matches your resolution or is smaller than your resolution. So if you've got 1080p, find a 1080p template or a 720p template. Don't, don't take an SD file and zoom it to 1080p for uploading because you won't get any better quality. Find one that matches the resolution or is smaller. Find one that matches the frame rate because you don't want to change the frame rate when you upload it. You just want to use the same frame rate. And then, you know, Upload at the largest resolution supported by the site. Pretty much now that's, that's 1080p in most sites. And then what I do for every template, you know, the templates are pretty conservative. So if you look at Adobe Media Encoder, I think their YouTube 720p template is maybe 5 to 8 megabits per second. I boost that to the maximum, which I think is, you know, close to the 30 that I talked about before. So what I do, you know, all, taking that all down to a, to a clear message, find a template that's either larger or the same resolution as your target, find one that matches the frame rate and boost the data rate as high as you can comfortably do and still get all your uploads done. And then the last, mind the duration limits. Remember that YouTube, you know, some, some of these UGC sites have duration limits. If you're working with an OVP, um, you know, there shouldn't be a duration limit. Okay, so that gets us to the question stage. And I'm not seeing anybody. Anybody got a question out there? 54 of you, there should be something. Okay, is everybody able to leave? Let me check my email, make sure nothing's going awry. Okay, um, not seeing any questions, so I guess it's time to see. I hope you found this useful. We have another webinar coming up. The next one will be on H.264 parameters like profiles and levels. It'll be in two weeks. I think you'll find it pretty interesting if you're encoding with H.264. Um, if you have any questions, email them to me at joezer, J-O-Z-E-R, at mindspring.com. It's, um, it's on the handout that I sent to Everybody who registered for the event, if you want the handout, send an email, joezer, J-O-Z-E-R, at mindspring.com. That's it. Um, thanks for watching.